Hello everyone, today we are going to cover a very special topic. It is about the ninja, the special warriors that are the pride of Japan, whose secretive activities, mysterious skills, and charm continue to attract people from all over the world. While ninja are widely known through manga, anime, movies, and video games, what is perhaps surprisingly little known about who they actually were, what they did, and how they have influenced our modern culture. So today, I would like to explore the ninja in detail from various aspects, from their origins to their activities, techniques, equipment, and lifestyle. The contents I will discuss are as follows. 1. What are ninjas really like? 2. Skills and training. 3. Clothing and equipment. 4. Lifestyle and culture. 5. Tourism. 6. Summary. We hope that through this video, you will gain a deeper understanding of the unique existence of the ninja and rediscover the charm of Japan. So, let's step into the world of the ninja. 1. What are ninjas really like? The word ninja is derived from the Japanese word shinobi, which means to act in secret. Their origins can be traced back to the medieval period in Japan, about the 15th century. This was a century of warfare in the country, and they were employed as secret agents, assassins, and experts in destruction, and their actions were always carried out in secret. Their activities had a profound impact on the history of Japan, as they often provided information that determined victories on the battlefield. The history of the ninja tells the story of how they ran things from the shadows and how special they became in the process. Now, many of you may have an image of the ninja from anime and manga, where they are seen as a group of men and women who are trained in the art of warfare. There, they are portrayed as superheroes, dressed in black and performing acrobatic moves that are impossible at night. However, real-life ninjas were quite different from that. In reality, ninja dressed normally to enhance their ability to blend in with the local environment. By disguising themselves as farmers or merchants, they gathered information discreetly. Their acrobatic movements were also part of their physical training to enhance their physical abilities and maintain their ability to carry out their missions. In other words, ninja were not the brilliant warriors we often see in anime and manga, but were in fact highly skilled professionals with very strategic thinking and advanced skills. Understanding these differences will help us better understand the true nature of the ninja. The main tasks of the ninja were to gather information and carry out covert missions. These included counterintelligence, assassination, subversive activities, and sometimes combat support. Intelligence gathering was the task of gathering information about enemy plans and strategies, geographical information, and sometimes information about specific individuals. This information was used primarily for strategic planning by their employers, the feudal lords and samurai. To obtain this information, the ninja would sometimes infiltrate enemy territory using various disguises and covert actions. Assassination was one of the activities for which the ninja were best known and was sometimes carried out to eliminate a particular enemy. However, this was only part of their mission and not all ninja were assassins. Ninja also engaged in destructive activities. This involved destroying enemy equipment in order to turn the tide of battle in their favor, and included the use of gunpowder to detonate explosives. All of these activities were done in order to have a strategic impact, which was the main objective of the ninja. While their skill set was indeed very specific, it was directly related to the role they played. They were not simply fighters, but strategists who manipulated the course of war from behind the scenes. 2. Skills and Training Ninja training was very rigorous and aimed to develop all aspects of physical strength, agility, and knowledge. These disciplines often began at an early age and were carried out under harsh conditions, aiming to enhance both physical prowess and knowledge. The skills of the ninja were very diverse, but the main ones included ninjutsu, disguise, pharmacology, geography, and an understanding of strategy. Ninjutsu included covert actions, body techniques, rope techniques, swimming, and mountaineering skills, all of which were used to infiltrate enemy territory and escape danger. The art of disguise was crucial for gathering information discreetly. The ninja had acquired the ability to disguise themselves in a variety of identities and professions. This enabled them to carry out their missions while evading the gaze of their enemies. 
The ninja also possessed knowledge of pharmacology. They learned how to manufacture poisons, medicines, and explosives, which they used in their missions. They also had to be knowledgeable about first aid and remedies. And geographical knowledge and strategic thinking were important elements in the execution of the ninja's missions. This allowed them to move through the terrain and to see through the enemy's plans. All of these skills and training positioned the ninja as expert strategists in Japan's Warring States period. Their specialized skill set not only captivates our imagination even today, but was critical in shaping the strategic influence of that era. 3. Clothing and Equipment The clothing and equipment of the ninja were chosen for their practicality and functionality in order to effectively carry out their tasks. The ninja attire envisioned by many people, that is, black clothing covering the entire body, was actually not very realistic. Actual ninja often wore ordinary civilian clothes in order to act inconspicuously. By disguising themselves as farmers, merchants, monks, etc., they were able to escape the attention of their enemies. On special missions, however, special equipment and clothing were required. This included camouflage adapted to the local environment, special cloth to conceal body heat, and tools suitable for diving and nighttime activities. Ninja weapons were also very specific and had to be easy to conceal and multifunctional. The best known are the shuriken, a throwing weapon, and the ninja sword, a short blade. However, they also had other tools that could be used for a variety of purposes, including poisons, explosives, smoke screens, chains, and needles. These garments and equipment were crucial to the ninja's ability to carry out their missions. Each complemented the ninja's special skill set and provided the flexibility and adaptability they needed to succeed. 4. Life and Culture Let us now delve into the daily life of the ninja. The life depicted here may be a bit different from the thrilling, adventure-filled image of the ninja that we usually imagine. In fact, it was important that the life of the ninja be embedded in everyday life. Ninja lived as farmers and earned their living by doing farm work. This was so that they could look and act like the locals without attracting attention. While working in the fields, the ninja trained and honed their skills in the dark. Ordinariness was the greatest camouflage for them in their secret work. They also interweaved ninjutsu into their daily lives. For example, they knew secret ways to use everyday furniture and tools as weapons and escape tools. Indeed, the ninja's home was a treasure chest filled with secrets. In this way, the ninja blended their work and training into their daily lives and successfully maintained this duality. 5. Tourism There are many tourist destinations in Japan where visitors can experience the history and culture of the ninja. They offer wonderful opportunities to understand the lifestyle, training, and techniques of the ninja and attract many visitors. For example, Iga City in Mie Prefecture and Koga City in Shiga Prefecture are known as the most famous ninja villages in Japan. Iga City is home to the Iga Ryu Ninja Museum, while Koka City is home to the Koga Ryu Ninjutsu Village. The museum exhibits ninja dwellings, weapons, equipment, and lifestyles. It also offers hands-on programs that recreate ninja training, allowing visitors to test their ninja skills for themselves. Visitors can also experience a variety of tricks and secret passageways that are believed to have been used by the ninja at the Tokyo Ninja Trick House in Asakusa, Tokyo. Visitors are required to act stealthily and overcome various obstacles just like the ninja. These destinations are great places to learn about and experience the unique history and culture of the ninja, and each offers a different perspective on the fascination of the Japanese ninja. They have become very popular destinations not only for visitors to Japan, but also for tourists within Japan. 6. Summary Today we have taken a closer look at the ninja. We have delved into various aspects of their origins and history, the work they actually performed, their unique skill set and training, their clothing and equipment, and even the life and culture of the ninja. We have come to realize that our common image of the ninja often differs from the actual historical ninja. Yet both explain why we are fascinated by the ninja. Finally, we have introduced you to places where we can experience the life of the ninja for ourselves, the various tourist destinations in Japan.
Those places offer wonderful opportunities to understand and experience ninja history and culture. We hope that through this video you have gained a better understanding of the deep history of the ninja and their influence on our culture. Ninjas have captured our imagination and continue to influence how we think and act. They are part of Japanese culture, past, present, and future, and understanding them can deepen our own understanding of the world. This concludes this video. If you found this video useful, please like it. And please subscribe to this channel as we will be delivering many more sites and history. We will also be adding links to related videos in the overview section as they become available, so please check back. If you have any questions about Japanese tourism or history, please feel free to ask in the comments section. I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. We hope your trip will be a great one. See you soon.